Mate, welcome to Friday Facts number 428, Reactor and Logistics Control. Well, Circuit Control, and I have my controlling friend who has uh, finally brought, uh, brought himself back from Europe. How you doing, Mojo? Hello. I'm mm. awake. You're awake? Excellent, excellent. As it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon, it seems pretty reasonable. So, another week and the release is getting close. Uh, this time, we have a little bit of a different thing. So... You, we, you're back from Europe. Uh, you went to a small land, I hear, um, where you sort of had a chance to get a little bit more hands-on with Factorio. We covered that a little bit last week. Um, which means you've signed some NDAs, which means you're a little bit stuck on what you can and can't talk about, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I, my catch is I've also signed the NDAs, but I actually haven't had a chance to hands-on anything yet. So I think I'm more disadvantaged. More faster. Yeah, I the more free time, more free time. Uh, look, I, I was playing Satisfactory. I had a Pale Berry. I wasn't sure if it was not ripe enough or if it's too ripe. Either way, it did not go well, and I was not well for 36 hours. So, a couple of things. Uh, we have a reactor circuit connection. Uh, we have the ability to connect reactors to the circuit network, which allows the player to read the fuel and read the reactor temperature, which is a nice feature, uh, mainly because... It's an amazing feature. Well, look, I... Up until now, Factorio 1.1, uranium was cheap. Who cares? Yes, it is. Burn it. And it is still cheap. Nothing has changed in that regard. Yeah, slightly. If it's on a spaceship, it's probably a little bit less cheap and less easy to get hold of more rapidly. I mean, it still comes from the same uranium patch is what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just uh, has a few more freighting steps, so therefore might be a little bit more difficult to, you know, get from A to B. So you're probably not going to want to burn it quite as religiously as you were previously. Uh, so I can sort of understand why this feature was added, uh, but it means that, yes, you can now set up a lossless smart reactor, which doesn't insert any fuel unless the fuel is actually needed. So as we can see, we have a decider combinator here with... You know, if the temperature is below 850 and the fuel is zero, input, uh, well, tick mark, which is going to put more fuel in, which is really... You also notice that um, on the first picture, so there's two fuel cells waiting to burn, and then it's currently consuming one, but the output shows three. And so it, it includes what is currently being consumed. But what is currently being burnt. Yeah, actually, no, I didn't notice that. That's, yeah. that's handy. Okay. It is very handy. It also means technically, no, because reactors don't lose the temperature. I was trying to think about a good way to set up um, 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 nuclear landmines. Oh, the, nuclear landmines. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't cool down. So you just add three fuel to them and run away and they heat up to the right Much temperature. Enough. Yeah, I yeah. Think I think it's two fuel uh, with no heat that's attached. I think three fuel to make it safe. I'm not sure. Um. But yeah, uh, the side accommodator. The side accommodator, uh, we can see that, well, we can actually see inside the interface for a change. And it has multiple conditions. The decider combinator does multiple conditions and outputs. Which actually means that maybe I can program a decider combinator finally. If anything, it makes it harder for you to program a decider combinator. Oh no, because I understand and and all conditions. I really do understand that. Whereas the old, like, having multiple combinators hooked together, I just, my brain to get lost somewhere along the way. I actually think this, similar to a train, train schedule sort of and or conditions, I think I'd be fine at. Yeah. I suppose the one thing that really sets it apart from the old circuit network is the add description button at the bottom. Being able to write some words to describe what it's attempting to do is definitely useful well actually having the input and the output signals actually listed there i think is what saves it for me the fact that i don't need to have probe wires attached every single time i'm making another combinator and i can oh, yeah. You know, yeah, see them live you can see you can see the the live input signals and the output signals you yeah you see it twice on the input see how it says t866 on the condition t less than 850 yeah you see the 866 and then down the bottom, you can see it coming in with the red background, which means it's coming in on the red wire. Yeah, but out, down the bottom, it's telling you what signal's actually coming in. And up the yeah. top, it's telling you to look for the condition which actually happens to be coming in. But you could look yeah. for conditions that are not coming in and then go, why are they not coming in? Look at the input signal sections like, oh, it's blank. Well, I screwed up something three steps ago. Or 
it's not meant to be coming in currently because maybe that's your desired outcome. Yeah. Yeah. The point is, though, that you can actually see the number on the signal yeah, yeah. in two places. Yeah. So, yeah, it means that people previously read the steam amount in storage tanks and it was... Or the accumulator charge. Or the accumulator charge. Yeah, it was just... It was... Yeah, it was... Steam, I think, was worked out to be a bit easier. It, it worked out to be easier, but then you need to have enough steam and make sure when the steam tanks got low enough that they started... Uh, did you boot up the reactor quick enough that it off put the amount of steam that you'd lost in the steam tanks? It was a giant mess. It was yeah, yeah it was annoying. And you you had to have a two hundred tick timer to synchronize. In, it would either choose to by the Byzantian logic, it would either choose to insert a fuel cell or not every yeah. two hundred ticks. Yeah, it and was... it meant that um, it would often either overshoot chronically or undershoot. And you would uh, run out of power. Look, I just just burn the fuel. It was cheap. The... It was cheaper to burn your fuel. Yes. It, if you did not have a train full of fuel, right, or like hundreds of fuel cells ready to go, you were doing it wrong. Okay. At the point you got nuclear reactors running, more than a reactor, maybe two reactors, you should have Covrex running. You should be able to mass make fuel. It shouldn't be an issue anymore. Anyway, great solution. Glad they've added it. I. In the it current makes it, it makes knowledge, it interesting again. well, in my current knowledge, I can't see my, myself using it, but they do mention reading heat from the contents of the reactors may pro prove quite useful when you get to the final planet. And the final planet we've already known for a while is a very cold planet. So, um... Wet or cold planet? Wet or cold? I think it was just cold. I forget what Aquilo means. Mm, I think it was the god of that was the, water and that was ice. That theorised um, from the read at least yeah it was leaked last week's friday facts they, they, they leaked the name for sure and it's already been guessed lots of times but yeah uh yeah it, it, i think we went with cold cold maybe it's wet i don't know uh but uh they also added the ability to set uh a set assembler recipes we covered that a couple of weeks ago a uh, one missing part of the puzzle was related to making automated uh magical craft everything circuit setup this was the ability to read what items are missing from the logistic network so we added that which, um, Mojo, I know you've got to make everything magic machine that, you know, had many yeah. wires and smarts and required blueprinting multiple times in case a wire got missed somewhere on the way. I believe your life just got a whole lot easier, right? Potentially. I mean, there already is the circuit controlled um, assembly machines. Yeah, yeah. Saw a little like a while ago. But surely now you could like have a very simple circuit that's like request this, output this, and then wire the recipe into the assembler and then wire it back to Roboport because now you can read the logistics network requests. And obviously, if the requests go to negative, obviously it's missing the network. So turn this assembler on, set the recipe to that item, and start crafting it. Yeah. One of the biggest problems was when something. There are two conditions or two problems which cause he endless headaches is when something disappears inside a, a, a requester chest, it's no longer in the network, so you can no longer track it. Mm -hmm. The other one is when something goes in the air, like uh, when it crafts something, it gets picked up by a bot, and so it's immediately removed from the network, so you don't know that it actually exists anymore. Mm, yes, and I guess those still exist. That one still exists, but being able to... Um, more precisely track what's going on is useful. Mm, I guess the answer is just have access. That's always going to be the answer. Yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually the worst part is losing track of stuff inside assembly machines. Well, if they change the recipe, the stuff gets thrown out. Yeah, it gets rejected out. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's something, something. Uh, but they do mention this uh, that they does not include items needed to build ghosts, so construction quests. So that is something you need to keep a mind on. It also means that somebody's going to have a zero-day mod feature because there's already mods that do track ghosts inside different networks. I guess that mod's safe for now. That mod's safe for now, yeah. Uh, the the th thing is that not very UPS efficient, which is something that the mod creators have admitted themselves because there's a technical restraint on Factorio's half. So, yeah, um, maybe Factorio 2.2? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, but they also add the ability to read the number of roboports in the network. This will be used, for example, for automatically topping up the number of roboports as you expand your logistics network. So, 
for a very long time we've had uh, available logistics bots total logistics bots available construction total construction has been very common for a very long time that people have had like available it's x and y i think are the two defaults uh for available logistics and construction bots and you'd set them to like you know always make sure i have 100 spare 50 spare or whatever it happens to be so as you put more robots to work more robots would get added to make sure you always had a buffer but that means you couldn't cap the total amount in the network also means you couldn't have a flat line available in the network no matter what so i think and mojo's the expert when it comes to wires i think now you could have a combinator that says hey if i have 51 roboports the network and i want to have at least 50 roboport ro robots per roboport it could do the math and say if total amount of bots are less than say 250 by you yeah, would take the the number of roboports multiply it by how many uh bots that you want and then as long as it's less than that then it will add more bots yeah yeah and also make sure if there's no available ad bot bots and also make sure there's a total cap on there so you can't end up with a situation where there is 40,000 Logi bots flying around and nowhere for them to park. Well, you keep on building RoboPorts and not realizing that you're continuing to add 50 or 100 for every RoboPort. And then eventually, you know, you have a big array of RoboPorts and before you know it, it's requesting 40,000, 50,000. Well, I'm thinking for that scenario where somebody puts down a whole lot of active provider chests and then bots pick up everything and have nowhere to put it and then they just end up hovering because yeah there's no uh, storage oh, chest that, that, that currently in 1.1 1 .1, that's or actually going back years that was always a problem with re reading the, the available uh bots because every time it goes to zero it inserts more in yeah and you eventually end up in a situation where there are more bots than there are spots to put them in yeah yeah the, the other thing too is um i'd forgotten about this is that there is actually an upper limit to the number of bots that can be in a network and actually do anything useful i what new limit uh old limit technical old limit limit it, okay. it used to be that like the game couldn't uh divvy out jobs it was a combination fast of the game couldn't put out jobs fast enough and the bots couldn't do the work and charge fast enough oh yeah, yeah something yeah. like eight or ten thousand bots yeah something something yeah, stupid just yeah where it uh, sort of tapered off uh if, have if the bots and you just never see them being used if if the jobs were far enough away from another one another, you go over that limit because I've seen people go over that limit, right? Um, if the work is distributed enough, it will. But yeah. for the most part, you'd never see them. You would what you would consistently see is them never go over about eight thousand nine. Uh, it's, it's the same as if people made the the ultra tiny like robot robot micro factories where you have a train come in. And it's like, you know, making red circuits. So it unloads the green circuits, it unloads the plastic on site, and a tiny little mo micro factory converts that into red circuits and loads it into a different train. You'd be like, okay, I need two robot ports for coverage, and I need three for charging. And if I add a fourth, I don't actually get any extra speed out of it. You know, I, it means I can add more robots, but they don't actually do anything. And I yeah, remember those things, those, those compact builds usually surprisingly few robots yeah and that was that was one of the things that people were trying to when they were the meta people were trying to optimize them over and over and over and you'd end up with a situation where like this you know two robot ports is the optimal build if you're burst building things and therefore they get time to charge before the next train comes in but if you constantly use them then you need three robot ports so they have enough charging locations and then you need a slightly different build um to fit in that extra robot port. yeah I, I remember the, when they were the meta that Yes, they were. Whether the, well, they were the dream. Yeah, they, they were an interesting build, I don't know, build design, build case, whatever it happens to be. But yeah, um, you'd have a limit of just how many robots were actually needed. Uh, and then we have logistics. There used to be a, a calculation for that. I forget what it is now, though. Uh, I don't ever remember any hard calculations. I remember lots of rough cal calculations. Um, you know, ba back of the napkin maths, my favorite type. It was something like that, yeah. <clears throat> So then we have logistics chests uh, enable and disable. Uh, it, can be, it can be a little hard using logistics network to prioritize things like only bring advanced circuit here if we have enough. Well, no, if whatever had the highest request generally got the stuff first. Generally. Yeah. Generally. It was, it was not a guarantee, but generally it worked. So, no, you just need to play <laughs> more factory. Time, it was usually whatever request was closest to the source. Um... Uh, no, not if things came in constantly. If it was constant, it would just generally be whatever was the most. So if you desperately needed something, 
if you requested like 200,000 green circuits, chances are you got most of the green circuits, especially if there were none in the network. If you happen to have a lot in the network, you could have some very upset bots. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so they added a way to disable requesters and, well, logistics requests and providers with the circuit network, which to me, I'm thinking, um, what's the trash planet? Um, the lightning one. The lightning one. The lightning one. The trash planet. Um, Fungola. Fungola. That's the one. The one with all the fun. The fun trash to roll in. Yep. Yeah, uh, b b b b what's the garbage guy from Sesame Street? Yep. Yeah, his favorite pastime. Anyway. Um, I'm thinking that planet. That planet, because, like, you're going to end up in a situation, or even your main base, we're going to end up with, you know, I've finally got enough green circuits. I don't know how, but I've finally got enough. So I could enable a requester to then start, well, yeah, enable a request to chest to start pulling out excess green circuits to then recycle them and hoping to upcycle them and get better quality. Um, yeah, yeah, or the Fagola planet where, yeah, I've finally got enough of something so I can turn on some production line via requests or or that sort of thing. I, I It's a nice feature. It's a nice feature. I think it's... Mm, I think because of the changes in 2.0, it's something that's probably needed. Part of that, mm. just setting very large requests did the job mostly. Because it <laughs> yes. didn't matter too much. Um, but yeah, you can now disable uh, requests that stops delivery new. Uh, stops delivery is being ordered. Current orders will obviously finish. Uh, disable, disable providers. Stops the uh, items being provided to logistics network. But they're still stuck in the chest. Which is maybe a catch. I do like the fact that you can trash unrequested things. That's a... It's an interesting tick box, isn't it? Especially yeah. For um for re requester chests. Well, you can set the requests with the circuit network, yes. so it means you can auto chat trash from a requester chest, which is interesting. Yeah, I, I can definitely see why it's going to be required for things like you know assembly machines that rapidly change recipes. Um, yeah, yeah. It means you don't need an inserter to insert it into an active provider. Correct, correct. It becomes its own active provider-esque. Providing yes. you have storage chests. Storage chests could get so hammered. So hammered. As long as you're not one of those types that uses storage chests for everything. Uh, there's nothing wrong with filtered storage chests. I have you know, Mojo. There's nothing wrong with filtered storage chests. You just might need a lot more of them than what you've had previously. Yeah. Yeah, a lot more than what you think you need. And you yeah. still need a central storage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh so um yeah. So nice little feature. Uh and anything else you want to add, Mojo? Uh well you pointed out the last thing, the trash unrequested. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I was wondering if you're gonna notice it. Oh I noticed that straight away. I'm like, oh that's <laughs> handy. Oh, it's 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 amazing. Yeah, that's that's a handy feature to have. Um yeah, I'm not so much into the wire network, but I have a feeling with a 2.0, I, I feel like I'm going to learn. I'm going to have a crash course. I'm actually probably going to make a crash course as somebody who's had to learn all the circuit conditions and all the circuit settings in the last... You know, I mean, month, the way month, it's shaping yeah. up is that you're going to need to at least know something about the circuit network. Look, up until now, I've really prided myself in, I know how circuit networks work. And I can use them, but I've actually gone out of my way to not use them more often than actually using them. I, I'd use them for turning off steam power for accumulators, because that was like a no-brainer. one. It, it was. It, you're right. It was very, very basic to do, and it was. It was something that it worked better using wires than any other combination. Right. Um. Or using wires, using the circuit network. It was it was better with the circuit network than any other combination that was invented prior to us having decent combinators, etc. Because version fifteen added new combinators. Uh, fifteen, not, fifteen, uh, fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. They they upgraded the decider and the arithmetic. Uh, yeah, they added more. Uh mathematical functions to yes. the arithmetic. The decider stayed the same. Oh, they added more logic uh, I may have actually been older than this because it, it didn't have not equal to um... 15 they added they 
upgraded the circuit network. And prior to that, I understood the circuit network. I used the circuit network as good as anybody else. But when they did the upgrade, I'm like, no, pass. It was just too hard. I was not interested. And a few little changes made and yeah. Mainly it was just adding more functions that they could do. Yeah, they added more functions. But they, they, they also, they, they made the capability of the circuit network that much more complicated which meant that 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 point to get to that 80 percent i'm experienced point was much further down the list you know there was a lot more point. knowledge required and they removed a no smart insert was gone much before that uh 14 to 15 no i don't think it was i think it disappeared with oh no snake inserter was 15 because it was yeah. going to be the loader yeah yeah because you needed the smart inserter for blue science uh before 15. yeah yeah um that was when they made all inserters except circuit networks prior yeah. to that you needed the smart inserter to wire to the circuit network and, and can't forget the smart chest really annoying can't forget the smart chest oh yeah and the smart chest you had yep. to have a smart chest to, to wire to the thingy yeah yep. to any chest so you couldn't wire to any chest so that's the point where I gave up. I said no more to circuit networks, and I I basically haven't learned anything since because I was I was at that point was like you know I I'm I understand eighty percent of it in version fourteen, and then when they added everything else, I'm like nah, pass too hard, too hard. I'm not going to get to the eighty percent mark. I'm just no nah, no. Nah. I tried, I failed, I quit. Uh, so I do think that yes, with two point the ability for circuits is going to be much deeper, and I also think with some of these changes. Especially, as I said, I think with the decider combo, the way they've done the conditions, I think it's now at a point where it's easier for people to understand. Because I've seen people yeah. put together combinator messes that do, you know, flashy lights and all sorts of things. And I just look at it as like, yes, I've seen the inside of a circuit board uh, with, with you know, oh, be more exact, probably more like a breadboard where, you know, you've got half a dozen transistors and, and other things and then all wires on the back because nothing's done with traces. Um, and you're just like, yeah, I, uh, yep, yeah, wires, cool, yep, power goes in, data comes out, yep, I understand this, not, uh, and that's sort of the case that a lot of people have, and I've, I've actually seen people use them on my own community maps, where they've gone and got a blueprint for something like pretty lights that display a counter, and they don't understand how it works, and they've spent 45 minutes or an hour working out how somebody else's blueprint works, to then implement something that could have been done in five minutes using a different means. Yeah. Yeah. Not a fan. Anyway, uh, LAN party results. Uh, so Mojo, uh, they finished up a five-day LAN party on Monday this week. Know anything about it? Um, yeah, that's been news to me. News to you? Okay. Okay. I hear the flights back from you are at a very, very long, right? Yeah, they're 14 hours. Hang on. That's flight time, right? Oh, uh, oh, that's a, the second flight. Oh, okay. And the, the first flight, flight? Depending on the direction. First one's six hours. Oh, okay. So it's just like 20 hours sitting on a plane. And any... Yeah, 24, 24 hours total travel time. Okay. Uh, hang on. Is that back to your city or is that back to your house? Because I have back a feeling you haven't got home yet. To airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then there's some time to get back from the airport. Then there's like an hour on top of either that plus... A few hours waiting for the plane. Yeah, yeah. It's more like 30. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Especially up... because on the way back, I got I, I arrived an hour before check-in opened. I got the time wrong. Oh, good. Good on you. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, that's a mojo skill right there. Uh, yeah, it turns out Australia is a very, very long way away from everywhere, including Europe. Um, yeah. And... Yeah, uh, so 24 hours total travel time plus to and from home. And then, of course, you're going to get to the airport early to go through customs. And yeah, good uh, 30, 33 hour, 34 hour day, was it, Mojo? Um, he doesn't know. So, remember. by technical definition, going there, when was it Tuesday or Wednesday, was 34 hours long? Uh huh. Because it extended by eight hours? Yeah. Um, then there's also the waking time, so it was more like a 38-hour day. Yep. Before I got to sleep. Yep. And it was a similar story on the way back. Yep, yep, yep. Sleeping on a plane is hard. Uh, it, it is. It's a required skill. It's a required skill. I'm lucky that I can sleep just about anywhere. I have been known to sleep. Uh, I have a photo somewhere of me sleeping 
at a party with loud music running, uh, standing up in a stairwell. It's an acquired skill. Don't ask. Mm. Um, during the event, they had nearly 900 individual feedback reports, which is a crazy amount. Uh, I, I, I have a comment, and this is a very quick way that I have solved feedback reports that I've received personally, uh, and that is if you remove people's keyboards and give them a pen and paper instead, you'll instantly cut the number of feedback reports by, by at least a factor of four. Um... People are really averse to writing nowadays, it turns out. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's always sort of been the thing. Yeah, it's just so easy to get a keyboard and just bang something away. Yeah. Um, so that would easily if you take... Make something even moderately difficult, people will avoid it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's going to take from 900 down to, you know, three, 200, somewhere there. And then I guarantee out of the 200 or so you've got... 50 of them, people don't write every day in their life. So they probably haven't written a more than a sentence in the last month so you probably get a 50 of them you just did illegible to start with so they just go straight into the brown filing cabinet uh yeah yeah 900 reports is a lot um yeah it was only 100 people so that's an awful lot of reports nine, nine per, per person. person yeah over five days that's two a day yep uh so katiana is that right Kat katya Katya, something like that. Katya, yeah. Uh, spent her time during the event sorting through the reports as they came in and raising the biggest bugs and issues to Boss Kid, not to mention all the ideas and suggestions for uh, we had from talking to everybody. Some of the team finished. In, some of the teams finished in the 50 hours we played. Others were feeling okay with the overall pacing and progression. Uh, there are a few areas that we'd like to focus on for Space Age release, but overall it seems stable and fun enough, so there's no need to worry about keeping a release date of the 21st of October. Um... So, do you have any comments, Mojo, that you wish to add? So, remember, I think it was last week, um, I mentioned how many hours of playtime. So, 50 hours, if you really push in the direction of finishing the game, is definitely doable. So, mm -hmm. you can finish it quite quickly. But if you do, I still w think if you're in a solo, you, you could easily spend 200 hours. 50 uh, hours with a group of people. With a group of people, yeah. Yeah, because you're going to need multiple hands to do multiple things. Um, yeah. So, yeah. All, all multiple hands on multiple planets also helps. Yes. I also know that some people who went to the event had played Space Age prior to that. So Yeah, some people um, have been working with it already. Yeah. So there are people that finished within the 50 hours in a team that had played previously, which is a slight advantage on a slight advantage on a slight advantage. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Most I, people weren't really pushing to just finish the game. They were really trying to um, weed out the details and and submit reports. Yeah. And feedback reports and bug reports. Yeah. I, I, look, I, I honestly think, from what I've, what I've seen, because I've only seen Friday Facts so far, I haven't had hands-on, I think there's probably going to be, for a single player, 100 hours. Easy. Easy. Oh, easily. Um, and that's, that's going from, oh, look, I finished Factorio, the base game, and then I decided I enjoyed this so much, I bought the DLC and just took my save and migrated across, assuming that's possible. I'm assuming it's going to be possible in some way, shape, or form, but I'm assuming, like, you know, I, I've spent however long, you know, finishing Factorio, and we all know that although a speedrunner can finish Factorio and get a refund on Steam because they did it in less than two hours... Most people don't finish Factorio in two hours. Most people, their first yeah, playthrough is... The number of people that have even finished the game according to Steam stats. It's, it's quite low, but then it's, but it's anybody low. who has mods instantly gets excluded. Oh, yeah, they right? get excluded. But we've, we've both seen over the years many streamers who have picked up the game, played it for the first time, enjoyed it, had chat there to help or hinder, you know, making sure they press spacebar as they run through the base. Um, and... You know, they've finished it in 100, 200, 300 hours. Um, so, yeah, I think most people, even those experienced players, they're going to get at least 100 hours out of it. And let's be honest, if Factorio, the DLC is, what, 35 US, 40 US? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't remember. But even, even if it's 40 bucks, 40 bucks, you get 120 hours, it's, what, 3 bucks an hour? It's cheaper than AAA game. Way cheaper. Uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
So, uh, it's not really comparable, but I yeah, mean, but it's still good. It's not really comparable, but it's still three bucks three bucks per hour worth of entertainment at the high end is still pretty good. Uh, let's be honest, with the amount of um, entertainment you've got out of Factorio currently, you're more worried about the total amount of electricity it's cost you over all the years for all the hours you've played in Factorio rather yes. than across the base game to start with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think with all that said and done, that's it for this Friday Facts. We don't really have anything until next week, but we do have five weeks. Five weeks, right? Five weeks. Five weeks, yeah. Uh, five weeks? Yeah, five, about five weeks. Yeah, five weeks until it releases. And I think Embargo actually drops a little bit earlier. So it's about to get crazy around here. Yeah, all right. With those thoughts, uh, both pleasant and not, I'm going to leave you guys here. Uh, as always, thank you, Mojo, for joining me. And we'll chat thank to you, you next week for 429. All right, that's it. We're out. Bye. Bye-bye.